The tropical moisture streams north through Texas once again. Welcome to your Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Let's take a look at that surface map. And we see a massive high pressure area across the Midwest. That's it right there, stretching from the Dakotas all the way down to Florida and up into the Northeast U.S. We've got this outgoing system there in Nova Scotia. Heavy snows being reported around Halifax, back towards Fredericton, and some snow being reported also in Maine. And that's that wraparound, that deformation zone up to the north, and that's an area of cold air advection. So also we're going to get areas of stratocumulus right offshore, very similar to the lake effect snows that we see in the Great Lakes. We get that northwesterly flow, picks up moisture off the lakes, and we get precip on the lee side of the lakes. And that's what's happening right there. Down in Texas, on the west side of that high pressure area, warm air advection and moisture coming up to the north. And this is where we look at those dew points. And what do we see here? Uh, 33, still pretty dry in San Antonio. So we're pretty early in the return phase for the Gulf moisture. But down in Houston, let me look at that closely. Yeah, 42 and then 40 in Corpus Christi. Lee side troughing established in Colorado and New Mexico. And that's going to be due to a strong westerly component, upper level winds moving somewhat like that. And further out to the west, another outbreak of Pacific air coming through the Great Basin region. Back behind it, we've still got some trapped low-level air, some of that Thule fog in the San Joaquin Valley. And then further up north, we get into the colder upper-level conditions, the more unstable in the lower and middle troposphere. And so we get those shallow showers, cumulonimbus, and that's what's happening right through there. All right, time to check out the Pacific. Let's pan over, and there we go. I think we can go a little bit further than that. High pressure off the California coast. Still got some moisture working onshore in Northern California, producing some rain there. And then further up to the north, doesn't look like much, but there's actually big changes going on. That's a warm front, and we've got temperatures near 52, which is pretty warm for that area this time of year. That's going to be warm air advection and moisture coming north and probably high precipitable waters coming into Alaska. So we're going to be flip-flopping this pattern right now, minus 20, minus 10, some very cold air. The core of it over Yukon, and we saw minus 53, minus 56 back on Wednesday. And that's moderated a little bit. And now we're going to be seeing the tables turn as warm air moves on up to the north. Don't have any data in Canada. The problem is there's a massive telecommunications outage affecting College Park, where they gather all of the alphanumeric data coming into the U.S. And so that's kind of shut down until tomorrow. But we've got the model-derived fields, and that's what we're seeing here. Cold air across northern Quebec, cold air coming south through the Mackenzie River Valley. So this is kind of a stagnant pattern. And we're mostly going to be seeing the storm system down here in the Dakotas, grazing parts of the prairie states as it moves into Ontario. And circling back to the eastern U.S., we don't really look much at Greenland, but let's check them out. Storm system south of Iceland still wound up pretty good. And I think the pressures are actually lower than what it's saying. I think they're on the order of 940 to 950 millibars, pretty deep. And lots of cold air advection spilling out over the relatively warmer waters of the Labrador Sea and producing some snow showers. Atmospheric rivers. Let's talk about that, because that is going to have an effect on Alaska. Usually they don't see that kind of thing. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in on this, and I'll disappear off the lower right side of the screen. Check out this atmospheric river right there. IVT values near 800 to 1,000 maybe. 
And over the next couple of days, going into Saturday and Sunday, that heads right up towards southeastern Alaska, affecting Yakutat and Juneau. So probably some drenching rains in that area. I did see a couple of days ago they were bringing almost one inch precipitable water in the Kenai Peninsula. I think the model has backed off on that and shifted it a little bit further east. But in any case, that's a significant amount of water vapor. And I would imagine some of that will make it on the other side of the mountains. That can be an issue in winter because that can recharge the snowpack and produce more polar air. It's too early to call that, but that would just be something to keep an eye on. Now here's one chart we have not really looked at for a while. This is the heights and vorticity chart. This gives us an idea of the dynamics affecting the United States, upper level ridges, lows, highs, troughs, and potent quasi-geostrophic disturbances. Let's see what we got right now. Now that's going to be a small compact trough in northern California, and that'll be producing lift on this side of that lobe and sinking motion on the back side. That's right there in that area I have marked in red. And you can still get showers back there. You've got strong air mass modification that destabilizes the lower part of the atmosphere, cold air riding over warm ground, and we find very cold air in the upper levels west of those baroclinic troughs. And out here we would see an increase in the cloud material. So this feature right here, that would be characterized as a short wave. That's probably indeed what that is. And it's embedded within a larger scale wave. That would be a medium scale wave. And then beyond the scale of this map at a much larger scale, we would probably find a upper level trough, maybe in this area. I know it's kind of hard to see, but where you see the average of the contours kind of dipping south, that probably outlines a long wave trough. So embedded within that, large medium scale trough, and then maybe a couple of short waves moving through the flow. Although back here it is more channeled, and that would be indicative of a upper level jet. So the patterns we have this afternoon, well, we've talked about that already. There's a ridge right there, short wave embedded in a larger scale wave right there, and then another wave right here. And that puts most of the Midwest and Eastern U.S. under improving conditions. Now, let's see what's happening over the next few days. These troughs will be working through the Rockies and the southwestern U.S. and affecting the Great Plains. I don't see a whole lot of energy within these, although up in Minnesota, this looks pretty potent. Yeah, right in there, that would be some decent lift, and we may see... Pretty good reflection in the at the surface, maybe a little system like that, maybe an Alberta clipper. And then in the southwestern U.S., we have this ridge building, and the flow becomes more meridional. So we have a larger amplitude of the waves. This is much different from the start of the run, and that could have the potential to bring more cold air southward, because when we get that synergy with the upper levels and the conditions on the lower levels, we can pretty much advect air masses wholesale with that flow. And that's kind of what's happening there. So I'm looking for probably a very cold start to the week next week, anywhere east of the Mississippi River, especially in the Northeast. And then going into the remainder of next week, we've got this cutoff low in the southwestern U.S., that does happen during the cold season. That'll be drifting around, producing showers and clouds especially, and you can see it's embedded within this long wave ridge. So when we have that kind of pattern that's considered kind of a blocking pattern that will interfere with the progress of systems moving west to east, and you can see that we do have kind of a stagnant pattern may be broken up by the opening of that wave and this trough descending from Saskatchewan about a week from now. Okay, hopefully that was educational and enlightening.
Another one of my favorites is the 850 millibar temperature. This is up at about 5,000 feet. And using this chart, we can track the progress of different air masses. Starting out, what we see here is a large chunk of cold air stretching from the Arctic ice pack down to the Great Lakes. Now, I know a lot of YouTube channels, a lot of news media, they like to focus on that polar vortex. And I think that's going about it the wrong way because this is what causes the polar vortex. Get that very cold air that's very dense and the mass is in the lower part of the atmosphere, leaving very little aloft, and that helps carve out very low heights in the upper levels. And that's what we're seeing here. So starting out, you know, another thing about this 850 millibars that's up, like I said, at 5,000 feet, that means that shallow cold air masses, shallow air masses in valleys, especially up in the Arctic, we kind of overlook those localized effects. And this gives us the air mass itself, the, the, the big picture, I guess you could say. So what we see up here in the Hudson Bay region, this is definitely cold air because it's reaching up into almost the mid-levels. So let's see how that progresses over the next few days. Some cold air mass or some cold air definitely exits the Great Lakes heading out to Maine and Nova Scotia over the weekend. And here comes the next chunk of cold air. Another cold day for Alberta and Saskatchewan, that's for sure. And some of that cold air in Alaska, you can see where it's going. It's heading out over the Bering Sea. And that's being replaced from the south by that warm air advection. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. Go forward into Sunday and Monday. We can see most of the cold air coming from Canada actually goes east. Well, I guess other way. Yeah. So that's heading into Quebec. And so the effects in the southeastern U.S. are not going to be that significant. For Maine, New Hampshire, yeah, definitely. And you can see up there in Alaska, we have broken up the rain of cold air. Some warm air has made it up into that region, so we're kind of mixing out some of those contrasts. Things are kind of recharging and reorganizing. Certainly a warm-up in the prairies. So now we're up to next Thursday and Friday. So what's going to happen here? Well, it looks like we're still continuing warm air advection into Alaska and Yukon. So this area is going to remain warm and wet for a little while. Meanwhile, here comes another chunk of cold air south. Again, this is going to be next weekend. Yeah, double checking that. So that's going to run right into the Great Lakes area, some very cold weather on tap, not so much for the southern U.S. But at the very end of the period, well, we'll have to watch that. That could come south, but I don't really trust the models this far out. 250 hours out, no. But we'll look at it anyway. Yeah, that's a good chunk of cold air coming south. That would put the central U.S. in the deep freeze, but... That's late January, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's look at that satellite picture. Well, it's so late that we're looking at the infrared channel for most of the U.S. Visible imagery over here, and if we run the animation, you can kind of see the changeover from visible to infrared as we lose the light. And notice how the stratus across Texas disappears. That's because it is warm. The temperature of that stratus close to that, that of the ground. So that's an indicator of low cloud. Meanwhile, up to the north, see that cirrus up here, alt cumulus and cirrus, that does not really go away. So that's one thing you can do to discriminate with the cloud types especially with regard to low, mid, and high cloud. Now, we are running out of time. I don't really like going much over 15 minutes because people start getting sleepy when we have too much 
meteorological presentation, but I will show you this image. This is earlier today. Now, you might be thinking maybe clouds all the way from Kentucky up to New York, but if we put that in motion, yeah, it looks a little bit different. That's actually snow. That's that snowstorm that affected Kentucky, Tennessee, and the central Appalachians. And it kind of merges into this area of cold air advection cumulus and stratocumulus. That boundary between them kind of blurry. But let me run that one more time. You can check that out. The snow goes nowhere. The clouds, on the other hand, those move. And there it is. Looks like a little bit of stratus in there around Cincinnati, Huntington. But that snow goes all the way down towards Memphis, near Blytheville. And maybe one little patch. I don't know, what is that? Uh... Yeah, I was looking at this. I, I can't really tell what that is. I think that might be cloud, but you guys are welcome to look at it and check that out. And I need to go ahead and wrap it up for this Friday edition. I want to thank Meat Puppet, who sent a nice email. He said, a pleasure to be able to contribute something to keeping the show on the road. I've learned so much more from watching your channel than I could have otherwise. I appreciate the comments. Hopefully we can keep this program going indefinitely. And your support does make a difference. Hope you all have a great weekend. I'll head on out and... We'll talk to you again on Monday for the supporters and everybody else. We'll see you on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.